This is Donna. We're going to test our water using the H2O OK Plus kit. The back of the package tells you all the things it's going to test for and gives you the warnings of each um, item if it's in your water at too high of a level. The kit came with um, detailed instructions. It came with a little log. Looks like it has um, the ability to you log your results on two different days. It gives you the acceptable standard. It came with a hodgepodge of supplies, little test strips and stuff, so little vials. It came with this little measurement guide to read the PPMs. I Our first test tests for hardness, chlorine, alkalinity, pH, nitrite, and nitrate. So I'm going to open this test strip, the one in the silver package called Six Test. And how you open it is sort of like a band-aid. You peel the pieces apart, expose it. Okay. Now Here's our measurement guide. I folded it, so these are the six we're going to test for. And note the default, the, the initial pad color matches the lowest. So hardness is the light blue, chlorine is the yellow, alkalinity is sort of a mustardy color, pH is sort of a, sort of rusty, nitrite and nitrate are sort of white by default. So instructions tell us to fill our vial up to the top etched line. You can't see it on video, but there's a little scratched line at the top. So we're going to dip our strip for two seconds, remove with the pads face up, shake off excess once, and immediately take readings for the, four, the first four tests, hardness, chlorine, alkalinity, and pH. Then we wait 30 seconds and read for nitrate, nitrite and nitrate. Okay, so we're going to dip for two, remove with pads face up, shake off once, and immediately read. So dip for two, 1,001, 1,002. Remove with pads face up, shake off once, to shake off excess water, and immediately read. Wow. So, um, hmm, you try to match the colors. So I'm going to say my hardness is a 250. My chlorine is a 3. My alkalinity most closely matches the 180. My pH most closely matches hmm, it's in between an 8 and a 9, so I'm going to say an 8. My nitrite Oh, it's pretty much a zero. Oh, wait a minute. It's supposed to wait um, 30 seconds. It's been about 30 seconds. We'll give it a few more seconds. But it looks like my, my, my nitrite and my nitrate numbers aren't even really reading. They're in between zero and the 0.5, and then nitrate is in between zero and five. So, wow. Um... Well, the nitrate has darkened a little bit, but I have to be just going to put zero and zero here because they're really not registering too much. Or I'll put a zero and a two. I'll put a two for nitrate. We're going to move on to the copper test. You fill up your vial to the etch line. I have fresh water. We're going to open our copper strip. It says copper test. Open it up. We are to dip it and swirl ten times. Remove with the pad up. Do not shake off X water. We're going to count for 15 seconds using our little timer here. Okay, and then we're going to discard. We're going to read it and then discard it. 
and here's our chart. You can see by default that pretty much matches the lower, here's copper, matches the lower one. Okay, sort of matches. It's not a, a great fit, but you get the idea. Okay, so dip it in, swirl 10 times, remove it face up, count 15 seconds, and read. So dip it in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we're going to wait 15 seconds, and then we're going to read it. We're at five seconds. It said, "Don't shake it off." 12, 13, 14, 15. Hmm. I would say it's a one. So let's go ahead and record that. Copper is a one. Next test is for iron. Again, we fill our plastic tube to the etched line. This is new water. We discard the water from the previous test. They want us to open the strip from the iron package. Remember, you sort of open it like a band-aid. They want us to dip the strip, immerse it for two seconds, remove with the pads, face up, shake once to remove excess water, and wait 60 seconds. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to dip for two seconds, remove with the pads, face up, shake once, and wait 60 seconds. So 1,001, 1,002. Face up, shake once, Wait 60 seconds, and then we'll be able to check it against this little guide. 60 seconds is quite a while. Sixty seconds. Hmm, yeah. Maybe a point one. See it doesn't even it's not even dark. I really don't even think it registered. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at zero. So I'm going to mark our iron at zero. The acceptable range is 0.3, so we're fine with the iron. Next test is for pesticides and lead. I've opened the package. It has this Pretty strange little dropper. You squeeze it to pick up water. It has this little test file and it has two strips. Okay, the yellow is lead, the blue is pesticide. See how they have a one and two on them? Okay, take a look at the readings. Two lines are going to appear. If the line toward the one is darker than the two, it's negative. Or if you just have one line, it's negative. If the line toward the two is darker than the line toward the one, so if the line on the right side is darker than the line on the left side, it's positive. Or if the numbers are equally dark, it's positive. If no lines appear, or both lines are very light, the test did not run properly. Okay, so I have another fresh bottle of water. Move my little log out of the way here. We don't need it right now. Okay. So they want us to use the eyedropper to pick up two dropperfuls of water and put it into this tiny test file. There's actually two. I guess I'm only going to squeeze the top one right there. Okay. So I'm going to squeeze it totally flatten it, okay, put it in the water, release the bulb to pick up water, then squeeze it again to get rid of the water. So let's do it once more, squeeze the bulb, put it in the water, let go to pick up water, and squeeze it again, okay, and we're done with the eyedropper. It says swirl vial gently for several seconds. Okay, several seconds. 
and then place on a flat surface. Okay, there we go. Place both the test strips in the vial with the arrows pointing down. See the little arrows at the end? They're pointing down. So we're going to put them both in here, pointing down. All right. Wait 10 minutes. Do not disturb during this time. And blue lines will appear. So we're going to reset, start. So in 10 minutes, we'll return and take a look at our lines. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. Now let's go ahead and read them. Remember if the line the lines toward the left, it's negative. So we have lead and I don't know if you can see it. The line toward the one, toward the left, is way darker than that super fine line right there. Super fine line to the right. So this is a negative test. So if the, if the line toward the one is darker than the right line next to the number two, or if you only see one line, it's negative. And if it's the reverse, if the line toward the two is darker, it's positive. So lead is negative. Now let's go ahead and read our pesticide test. Pesticide test. Hmm. I see two lines. They're pretty light. I would say the one toward the, the one is a little darker. Let's see if you can see that. So I would have to say this is, is negative. It's either negative or not valid because it says if no lines appear or both lines are very light, the test did not run properly. So the one is just a hair darker, so I would say it's negative. It's definitely not a positive test. So I'm going to record my lead as negative, and I'm going to record my pesticide as negative. The next test doesn't really have a procedure. You basically run your cold water for a minute and smell it and you're, you're trying to see if you smell a rotten egg smell and then you turn it off and do the same for your hot water. And if the rotten egg smell is present in both the cold and the hot, you have hydrogen sulfide in your water. If you only smell it in the hot, that means it's some type of chemical reaction inside your hot water heater. This next procedure is going to test chloroform bacteria. There's two steps. First step is we're going to dechlorinate our water and then we're going to run the procedure. And the procedure actually takes 48 hours but we'll set it up. So you take the Whirl pack, that's just what it's called. It's scored at the top, so you want to rip off the scoring. Very good. Now, see how there's two tabs on each side? You want to use them to open it up. Now, we're going to take our tap water, and I filled this clean little pitcher up with tap water. We're going to fill it to the 100 millimeter line. there. That looks good. Now you put them together and they want you to roll it three times to make sure you have a good water seal. Okay, I rolled it three times. Now the instructions say to shake the bag to dissolve the tablet. So we we're going to shake the bag until the tablet's dissolved. Okay, I cannot visibly see it anymore. Now, they say unroll it. Now we're going to 
use our tabs on the side again to reopen the bag and we're going to fold I don't want to put my fingers in there so I'm going to fold this piece over and it makes like a little yeah makes like a little pour spout now you take your your glass this is glass, a little cylinder for lid. And see how it has a tablet? We're going to fill this little cylinder to the 10 millimeter line. We're just going to stand it upright, make sure the tablet's flat while it's standing. And we're going to incubate the tube and make sure it stays upright at room temperature for 48 hours. And then we're going to compare. If it's yellow, it's positive. If it's negative, it's going to be sort of pinkish. Okay? So let me get this off of here. Now we only need 10 milliliters. This will be interesting. I'm not real coordinated. This is not my strong suit. I have worn enough though, so if some spills, it's fine. Okay, well, it's a little over, but that's okay. Well, that's okay. Okay, so now we're going to put the lid on. Okay, store out of direct sunlight on a flat surface with the tablet flat for 48 hours. So we're going to let it incubate and we'll see what the results are. Okay, 48 hours has expired since we started our chloroform bacteria test. Now, positive, for a positive test, meaning chloroform bacteria is present, there's going to be a gel that rises to the surface, and then the liquid should be yellow. Negative means the gel remains at the bottom of the tube, and it remains pink. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a pretty gross-looking like slimy stuff, like a slimy cloud in there. So ours is absolutely negative. This was the test I was most concerned about, actually. So ours did not turn yellow in any way. So this is a negative test. Our last test is to test for iron bacteria. And we're not testing for iron, we're testing for a microorganism called iron bacteria. You fill a clear glass with cold water and allow any sediment to settle to the bottom. You want to allow it to sit for four to five minutes, not just so you can't see it moving anymore. And then look for any sediment at the bottom. If your sediment has a feathery appearance, that means the iron bacteria is present. If you don't see anything, or you see a rusty powder, that means iron bacteria is not present. So I don't have a totally clear glass because all mine are colored. I have blue and green. But my little vial, my clear vial of water has been sitting for a few minutes and I really don't detect any noticeable sediment. So I believe I'm negative for iron bacteria. We've completed our test. Our little scorecard shows that the only thing our water exceeded the recommended levels of is hardness. Hardness is pretty much off the chart. Alkalinity it is at the top of the recommended standard and pH is at the top, but there's nothing that really indicates that it's unsafe. I hope this is helpful. Thank you.